Good morning. Jesus Christ told his early disciples that they should not go out until they had the power from upon high. Power from upon high was the Holy Spirit and power, and it came the day of Pentecost. And it was evidenced by, and uh, resulted in, all of the people in the upper room speaking in other tongues. These other tongues were spirit languages, or angel languages referred to in the Bible uh, several times, the first time by Jesus himself in Mark chapter 16, where he said, Those who believe in my name will cast out demons, speak in other tongues, and lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. This was the first announcement of the speaking in other tongues directly, though in the prophet Joel and in, other, in Isaiah it refers to speaking in other languages not learned by men. Now, <coughs> Jesus told his disciples not to go out witnessing without the power of the Holy Spirit that came on the day of Pentecost. And five times in the book of the Acts of the Apostles we have the advent of this uh, power being given to people and initiated often by laying on of hands of the apostles. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said, would mean rivers of living water coming out of your heart or your spirit man um, in in the book of John. But he said to the disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, okay, wait for the Holy Spirit and power which I'll baptize you with from upon high. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 it says they all spoke in other tongues and prophesied as the Spirit gave them utterance. In the book of uh, um, Acts chapter 8 and Acts chapter 10 we uh, and Acts chapter 19 we see these uh, situations uh, once again happening. In Acts chapter 10 Cornelius' household all began to speak in tongues and then of course um, in Ephesus and the Gentiles in Acts chapter 19 Paul laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues. In front of two or three witnesses, let every fact in the Bible be established, the Bible itself says. And if you need to speak in other tongues, let me tell you that this is not the gift of speaking in other tongues, this is the evidence of speaking in other tongues. There are three kind of other tongues mentioned in the Bible. One is diverse kind of tongues where you speak in a language you don't understand, but it comes to the other person's ear in their own home language, such as Greek or English or something. That's the first kind. The second kind is where you speak to God alone. Only God understands you. You speak from your spirit man. That's found in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. No man understands you. And it says, what shall I do then in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 14? I'll speak or pray in my spirit and in my understanding. Showing you that the spirit praying in other tongues is not with your understanding. I will sing with my spirit and I will sing with my understanding. Showing you that you can sing in tongues and with your understanding. Showing you that this kind of tongues has no understanding to it. You're just praying to God. The third kind of other tongues that is seen in the Bible of course is the gift of the spirit called other tongues with interpretation. Two gifts. Okay. This is the advent of the New Testament, the other tongues never found in the Old Testament. So we have three kinds or operations of the same spirit language. But the first kind is the advent of speaking in tongues to God without understanding. Why do we need this? Jesus Christ said we needed it. Not the other tongues part, but the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ said we needed it. And therefore, we need it. Okay? He didn't want us to go out with, as human beings just using our brain and our memory about scriptures. He wanted us to be led by the Holy Spirit and baptized with power. Now the disciples had already healed the sick and cast out demons uh, in the name of Jesus. And uh, so this was a, an added advantage to have the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon them in the day of Pentecost first thing that happened was they saw something, heard something, and spoke something. <coughs> and uh, 
that was really good for them to do that. Uh, you, it was a manifestation of in the sensory realm of the Holy Spirit power. Okay, now this is what the Holy Spirit is. It's a manifestation in the sense realm. The Holy Spirit himself comes to our spirit. He touches our spirit. God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now the Holy Spirit is needed because when you're praying in tongues you get into the spirit. This situation like John refers to in the book of Revelations chapter 1 I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You can be walking along as a normal man down the street, somebody falls down in front of you dying and you s immediately start praying in other tongues. As soon as you start praying in other tongues the Holy Spirit come upon you. It's a quick way of, of being in the Spirit. You are immediately surrounded by the Holy Spirit and are able to cry out to God. He knows what's needed. You don't even have to explain it in English or your home language. You're just praying in, in angel's language, a spirit language, and the answer comes. You lay hands on that person and the anointing power of God falls upon them and they get healed. This is very important, very necessary uh, gift uh, or the gift of the Holy Spirit. Of course we do not have the gifts of the Spirit. There are three kinds of gifts in the Bible. Ministry gifts divided into two kinds and the spiritual gifts. The nine spiritual gifts found in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The ministry gifts are different. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher and pastor and those are callings by Jesus but the spiritual gifts will be given to those who believe in my name those who believe will speak in other tongues and cast out demons and heal the sick the spiritual gifts are for the church for the body of Christ to minister through ministering these spiritual gifts and you can ask for those as in Luke chapter 11 verse 9 to 14 ask for the Holy Spirit and you'll be given the Holy Spirit. Now I want to pray for you for the Holy Spirit now. I'm just laying a foundation from the Word of God for you. It's important to have the Holy Spirit in your life. It's important to be baptized with power. It's important to speak in other tongues. It's important to be a priest and not an educationalist, not a brain man but a spirit man. It's very very important. We are New Testament priests. We are here to follow the ministry of Jesus Christ and to be anointed like Jesus was anointed. Now I wish to pray for you. If you have not got this or if you've lost the ability to speak in other tongues to the Father or if you just need extra infilling of the Spirit, I want to pray for you now. Please put your hand on the computer, link up with me Agree with me now, Father Modoro Shtikere Hanta Kariasotoshta. Father, I give you praise. You are always gracious and good to us all. Alabindo Koriesta Kiriaramanahata. You gave us your son and the gift of the Holy Spirit to minister your grace and your power upon planet Earth. Now I pray for these people that they may receive your gift of the Holy Spirit, empowerment with the evidence of speaking in tongues and prophesying, dreams and visions. Lord, empower them now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We receive it now. You said ask and it will be given. Seek and we will find it knocker and the door will be open. Now we've asked, we believe, we receive it in Jesus name. Amen. Now I just want to tell you something. Start yielding to the Spirit. If you haven't spoken in tongues right now, but you asked him with me, start yielding. It means start speaking words that you can't understand. It's just a way of yielding to the Holy Spirit. Okay, he will give you words. But at the beginning, you have to yield. You have to ask him with your spirit, not just with your mouth. And so by so doing, yielding to the spirit allows him to come in a big way 
and uh, uh, take control of your lips and as you move your lips and as you begin to speak even baby languages or nonsense words don't worry about it it mustn't come from your head it must come from your heart listen this is available and at will the Bible says I will speak uh, I will pray with my spirit I will pray with my understanding that means you have a will in the situation I will sing in the spirit I will sing with my understanding that means your will is involved in this thing God will not uh, override your will you must will to do these things and you must give control to the Holy Spirit and don't worry about going wrong you won't go wrong Luke chapter 11 says would your father give you a snake if you asked for something would he give you something horrible no he won't you're not gonna get something bad don't listen to any stories about getting something bad you're asking the loving gentle creator of the world and of your body and of your life for the Holy Spirit he's not going to allow something bad to happen to you so get rid of those fears and begin to yield begin to say you know even da da mama whatever like a baby language sometimes it's hard for us to give control to the Holy Spirit we need to start mouthing it and let the Holy Spirit take our mouth and our lips and begin to speak in other tongues through us it's as the Spirit gives utterance but as you will it and ask for it it's great you walk with God and God is a spirit to walk with him you must walk in the spirit realm. God bless you.